sensationalize my eyes and your eyes colorful lies are i fabulous exciting Spectacular. Welcome to this video on eye muscle uh, movements. This is a high topic for copies. Okay, so you've got uh, four straight muscles in your eye, which are called recti. You can kind of, you know, be creative how you think of recti and words with recti meaning straight. Anyways, uh, we'll move. Uh, there's two other muscles called your superior oblique and your inferior oblique. Oblique means an angle, so as you can see, they're kind of running at an angle here. Your inferior oblique, we'll see in a minute. Um, these kind of have more complicated functions. So the recti just pull kind of in the direction that they're kind of named in, uh, whereas your obliques um, are more complicated. Okay, so on this side, straight up, pulling upwards, we've got our superior rectus. Pulling downwards, we've got our inferior rectus. Then going medially towards our nose is our medial rectus. And then pulling outwards laterally, conducting our eye is called the lateral rectus. And then it kind of, if this tendon on the superior oblique contracts, it's going to pull the uh, the eye downwards in towards it as well. And on your inferior oblique, when the tendon contracts, it's going to um, basically rotate your eye outwards, so extort it and pull it upwards. Um, okay, so these uh, these muscles have different innovation, um, and you can remember them with like a little handy thing called LR6 SO43. Um, you've probably heard of that before. It's like some chemistry thingy. Um, so LR6 is your lateral rectus is innervated by nerve six, which is your abducens nerve. That's your cranial nerve six. Um, please remember your cranial nerves because they're important. Uh, then SO4, so superior oblique, this guy here, which pulls your eye downwards and in towards it medially. Um, that is uh, innervated by your trochlear nerve, so nerve four. So it's nerve six. Uh, and everything else, so superior rectus, medial rectus, inferior rectus, inferior oblique, are all innervated by nerve three, which is, what's it called? It's called the ocular motor nerve, so don't get it confused with your optic nerve, right? Okay, this brings us to our first pathology, which we're going to talk about. Um, so, which is going to be a third nerve, so ocular motor nerve, palsy. Palsy basically means your nerve is KO'd, so your nerve isn't working as well as it should do. So, imagine your K your third nerve is now KO'd. So your superior rectus isn't going to be pulling your eyelid up, your eyeball upwards. So your eyeball is going to start retracting downwards at, at your normal position. So for, at your normal gaze position, your is, is is here. But if your superior rectus isn't working, your eyeball is going to start kind of floating downwards. Your other muscle that um, kind of lifts up the eyeball is the inferior oblique. That's not working again. So now there's nothing to kind of lift the eye upwards. If you kind of get what I'm saying. So the eye is kind of going downwards. Your medial rectus is not going to be working because that's also innervated by your third nerve. So your eye isn't going to be pulled in this way. Instead, there'll be unopposed action of your lateral rectus, so nerve six, because at rest, all these muscles are kind of working together to keep your eye central. But if the medial rectus isn't working, the, the lateral rectus will be unopposed, so your eyeball is going to start wandering outwards, so it's down and out. The superior oblique will be working as well, because that's um, that's innervated by the trochlear nerve, so which is a different nerve to nerve three. Um, and the overall kind of movement is downwards. And, and you might be confused, like the superior oblique normally moves stuff inwards, but um, that's true, but the abducens has a great effect of pulling it outwards. So your overall effect is going to be downwards and outwards. Um, I've got this in more detail here. So in the third nerve palsy, which is the ocular nerve palsy, palsy, um, you've got your, your eyeball is going to start going downwards because your superior rectus isn't working. Uh, the lateral rectus is going to pull it outwards. And while the superior oblique will pull it inwards a little bit, it's mainly going to pull it downwards. And the overall vector is therefore going to be this way because the, the outwards kind of movement of the lateral rectus is stronger than the kind of intortion of the superior oblique. But as you can see, our summation, summation of the vector is this way. So down and out. That's your kind of classical symptom of a third nerve palsy. Um, down and out. Okay, so this is your nose and your eye is looking away, kind of away from your nose, down and outwards. Okay, there's um, a couple of other symptoms that are not really related to the eye muscles itself, but you know, since we're here, I'll talk about them. So you also get something called ptosis, it's pronounced ptosis, but I, I say ptosis, so I remember there's a peanut, uh, which means a droopy eyelid. Um, you have to know why this happens. So the eyelid has, the upper eyelid has two muscles that kind of keep it open. One is your superior tarsal, and that, because that's got an S in it, I remember that's uh, innervated by the sympathetic nervous system. Your other muscle, this is the one that is important in third nerve palsy, is called the levator palpebrae muscle, and that's, this is innervated by your ocular motor nerve. So if your ocular motor nerve is KO'd, which one of these two do you think is going to be affected? Well, it's clearly not the superior tarsal because that has other innervation, but if your nerve, if this nerve is kind of finished, then this uh, muscle will not be working. The function of this muscle, you might be asked to recall it in the copy, is it initiates eyelid opening, so it kind of, the first step of your eyelid opening, that's the levator palpebrae muscle. Um, so damage to this, the third nerve also causes a droopy eyelid because of this. There's another muscle that your third nerve is kind of like a busy guy. He's doing like he's doing your eye muscles, he's doing your um, eyelid muscles, and then also he controls your pupil, um, your pupil muscle called your sphincter pupillae. And normally this guy constricts your pupil, um, for example, in response to light. But uh, so if you shine light in someone's eye, the pupil will constrict. However, if this nerve, um, if your third nerve is damaged, this muscle again is going to be KO'd, which means that your pupil will be dilated and fixed. So it's not going to it's not going to respond to light. Uh, I think I've got 
Okay, so uh, I've got a picture in a second. Uh, simply, this can be caused by strokes, the third nerve palsy, uh, but also can be caused by like nerve damage as well. So for example, diabetic neuropathy. Um, this is kind of what a third nerve palsy will look like. So which eye do you think it's affected? Is it this eye or this eye? Okay, well done for those of you who said this eye. By the way, which eye is this, left or right? So it's on our left side, which means it's the patient's right side. So it's, it's kind of like you're looking at them, right? So the patient's right eye is affected, why? So their eyelid is lower, what's that called? That's called ptosis. Their, um, eye kind of, their eye is looking down and out at, at the normal position. You haven't asked them to look down and out, but their, their eyes kind of just wandered this way. And can you see, it's kind of harder to tell, but you can see that the right pupil here is actually much bigger than this pupil. Um, so that's your classic kind of symptoms of a third nerve palsy, and it's, it's something that is examined a fair bit. Okay. Um, if you get these symptoms in combination with something called contralateral hemiplegia, which means weakness on the opposite side of your body, or contralateral like Parkinson's symptoms, like a tremor, um, yeah, like a tremor basically, intention tremor, then you have something definitely called Weber's syndrome. Um, so Weber's syndrome is your ipsilateral, your your eye. So the eye that the the stroke is on is gonna um, be down and out. So the same side, fixed and delayed adentosis, and on the other side of your body, you're gonna have uh, weakness, hemiplegia, for example, um, and you might have a tremor on the other side of your body. Okay, um, so there's two causes of Weber's syndrome that you need to know about, and both of them are kind of strokes. Uh, there will be a video on strokes later on, so this is kind of just to like touch base. Um, but yeah, there'll be more detail later. So this is a PCA stroke. So your posterior cerebral artery supplies your occipital lobe, and even if you've never seen a scanner before, um, you can tell the first thing you look for is basically symmetry. So you can tell there's a big kind of black shadow here, which isn't on this side. Um, and don't worry if you you can't see that first of all, but like you'll get used to it eventually. Um, so that's an ischemia, which means like your your PCA has been uh, kind of blocked, occluded. So blood flow is not reaching there, so this kind of tissue has died. Um, and your other type of stroke that can cause Weber syndrome is a, um, a blockage of the paramedian, paramedian branch of the basilar artery. Um, and this is this area of the brain here on the MRI is a pons. I think, by the way, the PCA one is a CT scan. Um, and you can tell that because of the white kind of bone on the outside. But anyway, on this MRI, you can see uh, the second picture. You can see the, um, the, there's kind of a stroke in the pons area here, which is kind of just in front of the cerebellum. Um, and... Uh, yeah, this is the paramedian branch of the basilar artery being stroked. Both of these can cause Weber syndrome. Um, just simply here, there's a little bit of a diagram as well. So um, this is your third nerve nucleus, and you can see the kind of projections go from your third nerve nucleus to here. Your ocular motor nerve doesn't cross the brain, so this is why it's going to be ipsilateral on the same side of the stroke. So as you can see here, your PCA stroke is on your patient's right side. Um, so this is the right side of the MR, the scan, the CT scan. So this is on the right side, and this is the patient's right eye that is affected. Um, Okay, uh, so, and this is on the right side because you're looking at the patient's feet, um, and there'll be again a video on MRIs as well. So, um, ipsilaterally, your your ocular motor nerve will be affected, but um, it also is going to affect your corticospinal tracts and potentially your substantia nigra on the, um, and, and these the corticospinal tracts and the substantia nigra are going to cross, and therefore they, these are going to um, cause symptoms on the contralateral side. They're going to cross out of the medulla. Okay, um, so that's uh, kind of Weber syndrome. An important thing to know uh, with a PCA stroke is you're going to have an additional symptom of something called cortical blindness, um, which is basically you're going to get contralateral harmonimus hemianopia with something called macular sparing. So it's going to look like this. Um, again, there's going to be a more detailed video on PCA strokes, but you're going to get Weber syndrome uh, along with this. Whereas in the paramedian branch of the basal artery, you would just get Weber syndrome. Okay, I think that's everything about third nerve palsy is done. Uh, okay, we're now going to talk um, about clinically testing eye muscle movements. So this is when you're asking a patient to kind of follow your finger um, and you're isolating the muscles. So you might think, okay, are there other muscles involved? There are, but the whole point of this is you're isolating muscles and you're kind of seeing which ones work. Um, okay, so we start here with our normal position of gaze. And the normal position of, of gaze is defined as kind of looking straight out. And this side is our left side because we're looking kind of anatomically. And this side is our right side. So we start off um, just by saying, you know, follow my finger, look up this way, which muscles are involved. That's kind of nice and simple. Uh, when it's just kind of like a plain direction, like this, it's just your superior rectus. So in both eyes, it'll be your superior recti, just simply working. And that, that's the muscle that you've um, isolated to, to test that. Okay, looking straight down is going to be your inferior recti. Um, and so you're testing those in both eyes. Hopefully that can make sense. Okay, if we ask our patient to look towards the left, so their left, um, our right, their left, which muscles are going to be affected so which muscles are going to be working on this side so on between here we've got our nose so we've got our right eye our nose our left eye so the left eye is looking outwards it's not looking inwards right the left eye is looking outwards so that's going to be what it's going to be looking medially or laterally that's going to be looking laterally right so that's your lateral rectus so you're testing nerve six in your patient's left eye and what about the right eye well the right eye is looking inwards towards the nose right to to look towards the left hand side so on your right eye you're testing the medial rectus which is innervated by nerve three uh, 
on the left hand side, so then if you ask your patient to look right, so to our left or, or their right, um, you're doing the opposite. So you're testing the lateral rectus of your right eye and the medial rectus of your left eye. Hopefully that makes sense. Um, okay, for the other four positions of gaze, you need to remember this kind of thing. You don't need to actually remember each individual position. Once that, instead, I'm going to teach you like a little rule um, and it'll be much easier to kind of think about analysis this way. Uh, so remember the rule and then you can work out the positions yourself. But if it's an ipsilateral eye, so if we're moving in the same direction as the eye, then it's going to be a rectangle. You see what I mean in a second. So if we ask our patient to look this way, upwards and left, okay, so we're asking them to look left as well, right? So that is in the same direction as which eye? The left eye. So as that's what I mean by ipsilateral. The left eye is looking leftwards and the right eye is also looking leftwards, but the left eye is ipsilateral. So we're going to start off with the ipsilateral eye by writing out. So we're going to start off by writing the left eye, okay? Because this is ipsilateral. So, yeah, okay, hopefully that makes sense. Maybe I'm not explaining it well. Okay, and then the rule is if it's in the ipsilateral eye, it's going to be a rectile. So the left eye is going to be using the superior, because it's going upwards, rectile. Okay, that's, there's obviously going to be other muscles involved, but the muscle that we've isolated, the muscle, the main muscle that we're testing is the superior recti. Okay, and the rule is quite simple. Basically, you just do, for the other eye, is everything is completely the opposite. So for the right eye, it's going to be the inferior oblique. Remember, the inferior oblique also kind of has the power to move the eye upwards as well. So, um, and that's also another three. If we do it on the other side, if we ask our patients to look up and right, again, so we start, we're, we're looking right now. So we're going to start with the ipsilateral eye, which is your right eye. And your right eye, so you write that first, that's looking upwards, so that's your superior recti, because the recti is for the ipsilateral eye. Everything else is going to be opposite for the other eye, so which is the muscle that we're testing for our left eye is going to be our inferior oblique. Okay, so far not too bad. Hopefully it kind of makes sense now. So down the left, what muscles do you think are being affected in the right, are being tested in the right eye, and which muscles are being tested in the left eye? So in the, the left eye, we're going to start with the left eye first because we're looking um, ipsilaterally, so we're going to write that out first. And we're looking downwards, so that's your inferior rectus. And opposite to that is going to be, so your right eye is going to be using your superior, so the opposite of inferior is superior, and the opposite of rectus is oblique. So your right eye is testing your superior oblique, which is your trochlear nerve. And remember, the superior oblique makes your eye look downwards. Um, finally, our final position of our nine positions of case is if you ask your patient to look down and rightwards. So which eye are we going to start off with? Uh, the ipsilateral side, so the, the right eye. The right eye is looking downwards, so that's going to be the inferior rectus because that's going to pull your right eyeball downwards. And opposite to that, so your left eye is going to be the opposite of inferior is superior, and the opposite of recti is oblique. So that's hopefully uh, a nice easy way of just kind of uh, memorizing the, the muscles of the eye, um, and that's something that you can do examples on. Okay, uh, finally, there's um, a few pathologies. So for example, you're doing this test, and you ask the patient to look to their left, so to our right, to their left, and this is what you see. Okay, have a think about it. which nerve is affected. So. Again, if you start with the ipsilateral eye, on your left eye, it's your lateral rectus. So your left eye is this, th this muscle that should be working. And our right eye, looking towards our nose, is our medial rectus. But you can see the left eye is not actually being able to abduct. So where's the pathology? The pathology is in the left abducens nerve. Uh, so an abducens nerve palsy. Um, and this patient, this is a, another symptom that you need to know. Them looking left will cause horizontal diplopia, will cause double vision looking leftwards. Um, so when trying to look laterally, it will cause diplopia. Okay, this is a trochlear nerve palsy. Um, so what you can see here, you've asked your patient to look uh, down and right. So down and right, you're going to start which eye muscle? So on your right eye, it's going to be your right inferior rectus. And your your left eye is going to be the opposite of that, the, the muscles that we're testing. is going to be the left superior oblique. But clearly, the patient's left eye is not looking downwards. So therefore, the left superior oblique is not working. Therefore, we can say that the patient has a trochlear nerve palsy. He's looking inwards um, because... So the patient's eye is still able to look inwards towards this direction because the medial rectus can pull it in slightly, but it's wandering upwards instead of downwards because your superior oblique is not working. Um, and this patient, when trying to look down, so she'll have trouble looking down, and when trying to look down, um, she'll get double vision. So trouble going downstairs is always a... Well, yeah, if you get double vision going downstairs, that's a trochlear nerve palsy. Um, unlike in ocular motor nerve palsy, these are only seen actively. So when you're asking a patient to move, follow your finger, but normally their eyes positions will be kind of normal. So it's not going to be down and out normally. Uh, unlike the third nerve palsy, it's gonna, these are only going to be affected when you ask the patient to move like, to follow your finger. Okay, our, our last kind of thing I'm going to talk about is locked-in syndrome. So this is occurs when you have a occlusion of your basilar artery. Um, so this is when you have a knockout of your basilar artery. Um, this is also going to affect your corticospinal tract, uh, which means that your whole body won't be able to move. Um, and also your basilar artery supplies nerve 6, which is your abducens uh, nucleus. So um, 
in addition to not being able to move, your uh, adducens won't be able to work. So your eye cannot look outwards. Um, so in Lofkin syndrome, uh, they can't look outwards because your obtuseness doesn't work. But you can only, and you can't move, so you can only communicate via your eyes moving. Um, and even then, your, your eye can't move outwards. So your kind of only movement is your third nerve and your fourth nerve.